it's a personal honor and pleasure as an investor and advisor to T0 to welcome our next speaker onto the stage. Um, I've had the fortune of t trying out their new platform, Dinosaur, um, Dino by T0. Uh, I was super impressed with that. I tried it last week, smooth sign up. So it, it's all been smooth, fantastic product. Um, please welcome Patrick Byrne. <laughs> Thank you, Mo. Did I do that? <laughs> and thank you, God, I feel even more like Mick Jagger. And thank you for, I guess that would be more like Michael Jackson. Uh, thank you, Mo, for another great conference. And you know, I heard some people bemoaning the fact that maybe attendance was down, it was 4,000 people last year, 1,500 people this year. In my view, it's good. It's the tourists are gone. The crypto tourists who are showing up and asking us, well, what Bitcoin's gonna do next year? I mean, the people who get what this revolution is about are the ones who are here. Uh, people have sometimes asked me why I always dress in Chinese clothes. If you look at all these videos on YouTube, I'm often in Chinese clothes. It's because when I was about eight years old, I became aware I was the reincarnation of Shaolin Monk. I may have just seen too many old Li Xiaolong movies, which was Bruce Lee, but so I'm going to start with a little bit of Chinese. This is a 3,000-year-old character. It means, I speak Chinese, it's a 3,000-year-old character, Gua. It means kingdom or nation. And it's a interesting, you have to be a bit of a poet to really be into the etymology of Chinese, but it's interesting etymology. It's a combination of three things, mouths, mouths as in how many mouths do we have to feed, you know, mouths as in people, land, and a spear representing an army. And so in the Chinese worldview 3,000 years ago, when you put mouths, when you put people and land and an army together, you have a country. About five years ago, I said, I got that blockchain, that the main event of Bitcoin isn't really Bitcoin, it's the underlying technology of blockchain. And I said about I th basically building a tech stack for civilization and saying, what are the core processes? What are the core things that we're gonna need blockchain to be able to handle? Well, first, people, connecting blockchain, people like identity. Then ca capital, well, capital is a very fundamental process in civilization. Capital, Aristotle said capital just means potential. Where it comes from, capital, where it really ultimately begins is with rule of law and especially with regard to land titling. And if you were here last year, a guy named Hernando de Soto was here. He's an economist who really noticed this to begin with, that what got the United Kingdom and the U.S. and Canada going is when we got land titling right. That's what allows capital to be formed. Well, to have a country, you're also going to need a currency, some sort of ex way people can communicate information about value and scarcity, i.e. prices, that's what a price is. Economists say it's a packet of information about value and scarcity. You need capital markets, so you can take financial capital and marry it up to human capital. You need supply chains if you're gonna have commerce and exchange, consensual exchange. And lastly, on the assumption that this future that is coming to us is a, is a future where consent of the governed still matters, you need voting. So these were the six areas that I picked out five years ago. And I said, I, you know, you put these in a box, in my view, if you have, the, you have a tech stack for a civilization, just like 3,000 years ago, the Chinese saw it as, well, you put mouths, you put people, land, and an army together, that's a country. I see more technically, from a blockchain point of view, if you can solve these processes through blockchain, you have something, you have the, a tech stack to build a nation around. So I now organize these left to right. People by people, blockchain meets people. By that I mean blockchain identity, capital is land titling, money, blockchain meets money means central banking, Cat, you know, blockchain capital markets, blockchain supply chain, and blockchain voting. These were the areas that I wanted to be involved in with blockchain. And I went out looking for companies 
to either invest in or start up. And where I could find a company to invest in, I invested, and some, and some of them were like that show Silicon Valley, a bunch of Java monkey kids in a house with a box of weed and some idea about how they're going to use blockchain to change the world. And I'd go and I'd find the ones and just, you know, where I wanted to be, and I'd throw a couple million dollars and write a term paper and say, Do you? and I just went around the world doing this. And in some cases, we started the company. In some cases, we found them and funded them. And this is the collection of companies, 20 of them now. Uh, so because this will be online, and to my shareholders, I'm also explaining, this may have looked like some kind of random collection. I've never really fully explained to the public why I've done what I've done, but this is the organizing template around which we have found these different investments. Uh, and for example, voting, there's two blockchain meets voting companies that I could find. One's votes and one's vote, and we have an investment in both of them. Votes just did the first federal election in West Virginia. If you're in this military and you were not in West Virginia and voted, you voted through a phone app uh, called Votes. First time used in a federal election, was very successful. I heard that some folks down in Florida had a little bit of trouble in the last election. I, I can imagine in a couple years, two to four years, you might just be doing all your voting online, everything becomes blockchain secure. Uh, but there's a subject that I know is on a lot of people's mind and it's T0. Because for a lot of people's projects to work, there's T0 has to work. And I'm explaining why and what we're doing. We're creating a, a security token exchange. And just to tell you why I started, I've spent over $100 million on this project. And looking back, maybe could have done it cheaper. Sorry, shareholders, but you're going to understand why. Look, we started Overstock, and we were the cheapest SOBs that ever went into e-commerce. We did everything on a tiny fraction of capital. But I'm going to show you why T0 wasn't about, it was about speed. Here's a list of 10 big stock markets in the world. Uh, there's an odd relationship here. Notice I'll take the second one, NASDAQ. NASDAQ trades, it has listed, the value of all the listed securities is $11 trillion on NASDAQ, and NASDAQ is worth $13.2 billion. And that's a relationship of 12 hundredths of 1%. And of those of you who are in the financial world know that that can be referred to as 12 basis points or BIPs, if you're cool, 12 BIPs. And there's some that are 15 BIPs and 14 BIPs. For some reason, the Deutsche Börse is quite an outlier. But anyway, if you add it all up, these exchanges have $73 trillion worth of instruments trading on them. Their collective valuation is $129 billion. And if you do the arithmetic, that's 18 bips. That's 18 hundredths of 1%. And a way of thinking of that, taking take away this rule, is if something has, if an exchange has $100 worth of stuff trading on it, the exchange is worth 18 cents in that case. So just remember that math. Bob Greifeld, retired chairman of NASDAQ, chairman CEO of NASDAQ, he said a year ago, 100% of the stocks and bonds trading on Wall Street today could be tokenized. And in five years, 100% of the stocks and bonds on Wall Street will be tokenized. Now, I talked to Bob, and, he and I asked him, and he said, you can quote me on this. So I'm quoting Bob Greifeld on that. If he's right, let's talk about what's going to be tokenized. Well, globally, the value of all the stocks in the world, is there a laser on this? I guess not. The value of all the stocks in the world on all the exchanges is $44 trillion. The value of all the bonds, government, <laughs> corporate, and, and uh, household is $247 trillion. And real estate, I've already met three people here in the last 24 hours who are working on blockchain real estate tokenization. That's $217 trillion. If Bob Greifeld's right, that's all going to get tokenized in five years. 
That's $508 trillion worth of value. Now here's some interesting arithmetic. What if we follow, go remember that rule from the last slide, 18 bips. The value of the exchanges that trade assets are worth on average 18 basis points of the value. If that really gets tokenized, the value of the exchanges of 508 trillion gets tokenized, 18 bips, means the value of the exchanges that trade those security tokens would be $914.4 billion. So there's, that's what we're pursuing in the security token world. Building the exchanges that trade the security tokens means if Bob Greifeld is correct and everything gets tokenized, I don't know if everything will, be, will have been tokenized in five years, but I bet by five years from now, all the new instruments, all the new bond, stocks, bonds, REITs, et cetera, will be coming out as tokens. I think that starts happening quicker than five years. And I don't know how long it takes to take over, but the value of the exchanges that trade that, if it follows that normal rule, $915 billion. So who's doing it? Well, there's our company, T0. And in the summer of 2015, we got deemed approval from the SEC to take our ATS and have it be able to touch blockchain. Then we spent a year, 18 months, and got an S1, an SEC document, through the SEC, deemed effective that we could issue a blockchain security called OSTKP, which has been out there for two years. The first, then the last year, we issued a security token. Uh, it's open to accredited investors, and we have partnered with a Boston Options Exchange, which is one of the 13 lit exchanges in the country, submitted a rule book to the SEC so we can bring live a national stock exchange based on security tokens. So that's what T0 has done, and we have spent over $115 million when I think of everything we have done to do this. And so are any shareholders who write me about this and that, and they want to know why, it's because it's that $915 billion prize is what we're chasing. Now you look at other people in this business, and I decided to leave this as question marks because it's up to people to do their own research. I think we found in all the other boxes, I think we found two or three that might get a question, a, a check mark. We're not even sure of that. I don't want to talk about bad about or you know competitors, but you do your own research, you'll find. I think there's one that says they have an ATS, but I don't, I don't, it's not clear if the SEC has told them they can trade blockchain or not yet. Who knows? Anyway, it's up to them to tell you. I, we did the research and I think we found two or three question marks that might be a check mark. Uh, but in our case, we've done this. We have built this and what Mo said, uh, oh, how did we do it? Here's the big secret. Get your cameras ready, all you spies and cops and competitors. Here's the big secret. This is how we did it. I'm only going to show you this for a second. That's how we did it. I have removed all the names of the boxes. But something interesting, this has permission to go live. And we got our last permission. The technology is all done. We started onboarding people last week. We got approval from FINRA. We got deemed approval from the SEC on January 3rd. We got approval from FINRA last week. And without going into too much detail, I can tell you that they said something very interesting. They said in their letter that they're not legalizing the whole field of security tokens. That, th that they are specifically and only legalizing this architecture. And I'm kind of a punctilious little letter, but I don't mind because it just so happens that I think the same day the letter came in, the US Patent Office awarded us a patent on this architecture. So they can be as, as aggressive as they want about enforcing this rule that this is the only architecture that you're allowed to do a security token on it because we, we have a patent. And if I told you that the patent was for precisely this I don't think that'd be 100% true, but it might be. 
I, I really don't know. You'd have to get your own patent lawyer if you're trying to figure this out and you can look at our patent. It's pretty close to true that we have a patent on the thing that another, that the regulator is saying is the only way to do this process. Uh, so, uh, I'm going backwards, I'm sorry. Uh, back to that 915 so <laughs> billion dollar number. So we had got a patent last week on all of this. We uh, started last Monday or Tuesday onboarding the people. People who have invested in the security tokens are now bringing their, uh, getting their wallets. We could, we could punch the button today and make this live. Uh, as I believe was just said, uh, we're waiting a few more days. We're waiting until enough people, we're processing people and such, but you'll see, I believe by the end of next week, you will see this live for the whole world and security tokens trading in a legal, legal way. And I'd like to also call out on stage Sam Norsalahi, who is the genius who actually got that to happen. Sam, are you, are you here and awake from last night? I know he had that big night feeling last night. Anyway, well, Sam's not around. Well, that's what we've done with the $100 million of our shareholders' money, and we got it, and uh, I hope they understand now. I've never really wanted to lay out to the world the whole story, but the whole story is we're chasing a $915 billion prize, and we are way through this process, we believe, way in front of everybody else. Thank you for your attention. All right, Patrick Byrne.